Kristen, when you're worried about how many calories you're eating, do you have any special kind of trick that you like to use? Oh, yeah. I only eat food from other people's plates. You don't get any calories that way. What? Yeah. Well, according to Mary's memo, the real trick may be just avoiding frosting. Frosting? Frosting. Welcome to Mom's Wooden Spoon. Get your apron on and your fanny flicker ready as we cook up some nostalgia. Ooh, yummy. Welcome, friends, to Mom's Wooden Spoon. <gasps> friends, I like that. Thank you. I thought it was way better than like enemies and nemesis. It's way better than Nemesi. Nemesi. I like that. <laughs> well, you all have arrived just in time to celebrate with us today National Pistachio Day. Ooh, yeah. I love pistachios. Oh, I do too. But I think that all good celebrations yeah. either begin or end with cake. Oh, you are not kidding. And you're in luck because today we are making pistachio cake. Yay! Yeah, it is from a February 25th, yes. 1974 Mary's Memo, and it's not just a pistachio cake, but the name of the recipe is pistachio cake. And Carrie, I don't know if you noticed this, but this episode is airing exactly 50 years and one day after this recipe was published by Mary. No, I did not yes, notice. Yes, exactly. Well, happy 50-year anniversary. I know. How cool. That is really great. I like it. All right, so to start us off, be prepared to be overwhelmed with the baking of this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you we're going to start with a box cake mix. I think this is great. It's a really easy recipe, and it calls for one of my all-time favorite ingredients, pistachio pudding. It does. That's what makes it pistachio. Right. And I think you were telling me earlier that the nuts in the pistachio pudding are generally chopped up almonds. Yeah. From what I read, they use pistachios and then substitute in a bunch of almonds. Oh. They must be cheaper? I'm sure they're cheaper. Yeah. Pistachios are crazy expensive. Yes. Yeah, so I was going to buy some to kind of decorate the picture that we take of the cake at the end. I was like, uh-uh, I ain't going to pay that. Mm -mm. That's way too much money. But they're tasty. They are tasty. And we've talked about the recipe that I love the most with pistachio pudding. We've talked about it in a couple different episodes and it's our dad's favorite yep. it's a fluff that's made with cool whip and pistachio pudding and canned crushed pineapple mm -hmm. and it's called watergate salad Yes, which da, yes. Da, 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 they think yeah. originated in 1974 that's right i did some research on it and i was like which came first the watergate pudding or the watergate cake i didn't know there was a watergate Cake. Yes, and they believe that the Watergate cake is how the whole name came about because the big joke is it's a pistachio cake that has a really, really thick frosting on the top. And so they named it after the whole Watergate scandal because it's a really thick layer of covering that hides the nuts inside. Oh, that's <laughs> cute. I read somewhere that it's all called Watergate because yeah. Nixon loved pistachios. Really? I did not read that anywhere. Obviously, my research was far superior. I think mine was superior. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Can go ahead and think that. I'll keep thinking that. Although, <laughs> I struggled to find a single website that said the same thing. The pudding came out in 74. No, the cake did. No, wait. It couldn't be possible because the jello pistachio pudding didn't come out until 75. I saw that. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. What is this nonsense? Yes. Yeah. Is the interweb filled with lies? I think it is, Carrie. Oh. Yeah. So I found the answer. Yeah, I bet you did too. I did too, but I'm going to let you say it to make you feel good. Going with. <laughs> to answer the looming question yeah. of how did we in fact make Watergate things with right. instant pudding when Jell-O had not yet come out with their instant pudding, yep. there are other brands of instant pudding. You got it. And they started with Royal. That's right. They were the first to come up with pistachio pudding mix. They came up with it in 1966. Yes. And I found a box of a 1974 Royal Instant Pudding Mix. Oh, my gosh. And Did you find it at the back of your pantry? I did. I did. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> totally. Oh, don't eat that. <laughs> and um, there's a little king. I totally forgot 
about the right. king, the but little he's mascot not on there anymore. No, the mascot for royal pudding was this cute little king. Yes, a little cartoony king. So yeah. we'll put that on the website because when I saw it, it made me chuckle. Brought back memories. Huh? Yes, and I will say from the picture of the royal pistachio instant pudding box. Yeah, the green is way less. Let's shall we say obtrusive. Oh, then, yeah. You know, like Jello pistachio pudding is vibrantly not found in nature green. It is like toxic sludge green for it sure. Is. And it makes beautiful cakes and stuff. But, you know, also the Jello brand kind of came out and took over the world of pistachio pudding and pistachio pudding desserts. So I think they're taking credit for the Watergate cake and the Watergate salad and poor Royal just got shoved to the side. I'm so sorry, Mr. King. Oh, Mr. King. There's also a difference about this particular cake. We are not going to frost it like a Watergate cake. It's a bunt cake. It is. And my favorite part <laughs> is on Mary's recipe. Yeah. She indicates that this is one of her favorite cakes to make, bunt cakes in general. Mm -hmm. She loves bunt cakes because she saves the calories of the frosting. Oh, Mary, always thinking of calories. She would highly recommend carrots and celery at the Ohio State Fair. Why wouldn't she save the calories on frosting, which is the best part of a cake? I love the fact that I'm going to sit down and eat half a cake, <laughs> and it's totally acceptable <laughs> right. because there's no frosting. That's right. It's calorie free. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's kind of like I can have eight donuts yeah. as long as I have sugar-free creamer in the coffee that I drink with them. Absolutely. It gets the calories. I can have an entire Big Mac meal with large fries, but I must get the Diet Coke. Heck yeah, you must. <laughs> Otherwise, too many calories. We That's can't right. Have that. No. And so the beauty of this is it's in a bunt cake pan, which some people online were really scared of because they're kind of hard to get out because they have all those nooks and crannies. And you're always worried you're going to flip it over and half the cake's going to remain in the pan. Yes. Well, Carrie, you know, I like big bunts and I cannot lie. <laughs> <laughs> And I was looking through our old um, cookbooks that we have, mm -hmm. and I found unusual old world American recipes, little cookbook for 10 cents from Nordic Wear, and it has some really cool bunt cake recipes. Are they old world bunt cake recipes? I am hoping that they are because one of them is called Sausage Cake. Oh. Yes. You actually add pork sausage to a bunt cake and it has pumpkin pie spice, strong coffee, raisins, and chopped walnuts. Oh. Yeah. Doesn't that sound awful? Oh, that sounds horrible. Yeah. And is it all, it's all bound together with flour and eggs? Yep. And brown sugar <gasps> and ginger. It's like a spice cake or like a fruit cake that you add pork sausage to. Oh, I know. Doesn't that sound gross? It does. It's kind of like adding beef to your brownies. Who would do that? <laughs> Nobody intelligent, I tell you. <laughs> that is for sure. And the other one I found was a party meatloaf that you could make in your bunt pan. Well, wouldn't that make it fun and exciting? It would be fun and exciting, but I was reading through it. I mean, it does have delicious looking ingredients, horseradish, a little bit of ketchup, some really finely chopped onion, and peanut butter. I got, I have no words. <laughs> I recognize that we are on a podcast and saying things. Huh. I know, right? That, that's what I'm going to go with. Huh. I have never tried peanut butter in my meatloaf. I wonder if you would even taste it. I wonder if it would just make moistness and bind things together well. I don't know. You should try it and then tell us. <laughs> I, I will. Ooh, that sounds lovely. You know lovely. how they make those mini bunt pan? Yes. Of you could, you know how you like to make um, meatloaf cupcakes? Yes. You could make meatloaf mini boons. Mini boons. Speaking of boons, I love that scene in the My Big Fat Greek Wedding oh, yes. when the family brings a bunt cake and the Greek girl's mom says, what is this? And they say, we've brought you a bunt. A bun. She goes, a, a bunk, a, a, a bunk, a bunduk, a bunk. <laughs> it's a bunt. And a then, bunt. and then she comes out mm -hmm. proudly displaying it on a platter with a plant in the center hole of the bunt cake. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is a <laughs> classic, fabulous scene. It is a great scene. Okay. So I have put the cake mix and the pudding into a bowl, and then we're going to add some really odd ingredients. You know, 
Yes, they are. Yeah. So we're going to use sour cream, not on in a cake. It no. makes it very moist and yummer. Mm -hmm. We are going to add a little cinnamon, flavor this bad boy up. That's right. But I think really the weirdest part yeah. is the butter flavored oil. I know. And you tried to find butter flavored oil and uh, failed epically. I failed. I looked in the regular oil section, but I think your husband found it in with the popcorn. Yes. And not only is this butter flavored oil, people, this is movie theater butter ooh, flavored ooh, oil. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's going to taste like a night out at the movies. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be the best cake ever and mm -hmm. probably super easy. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, I mean, I yeah. think pretty much when you start with a box mix yeah. and a bucket of pudding but bucket it's really pudding. more often a, found in a box a, a so when you pudding. start with a cake mix <laughs> and a box of instant pudding uh yeah. there you go i you know i remember as a kid <laughs> making instant pudding yeah i love pudding and so you just whisk it and, yeah and then boom you have instant pudding you stick it in the fridge for a very short period of time right pull it out and eat directly out of the giant bowl that you just made it in oh yeah and I remember making it once, saying something to mom, I don't understand why you don't make pudding more often. Yeah. She's like, well, instant pudding is relatively new. That's true. You used to have to cook it on the stove. And I was aghast. What? Who wants hot pudding? I had no idea at all. Look at this. You got the bootleg Kroger pudding. And it doesn't look green. I'm mixing the dry powder mix in with the cake mix. Look, it is blue. It it's sure like turquoise. Oh. <gasps> It is. It matches your spoon. Oh, let me take a picture. Oh, that's wait, pretty. Oh, I've stirred it in too much. Oh, she ruined oh, everything. Oh, no. Yeah, it's stirred again. in. Messed up again. Oh, there was a blue. Stop I'll doing try, that. I'm trying to find some for you there a little bit. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to mix those two up. It says mix together the pudding and the cake mixes, and then we're going to add the sour cream, eggs, and oil. Oh, my that gosh. That butter oil is something to behold and the noise it makes is pretty nasty look at it like smell it it is so artificially buttery smelling it almost smells mm, i want to say like toffee ish maybe a little so Ooh, this might taste really good because we'll get the delicious flavor of the butter but it'll make it more like our beautiful apple cake you know how our apple cake's so moist mm -hmm. because it has all that oil in it mm -hmm. i'm okay. gonna go ahead and add the sour cream you want to work okay. on the eggs i do kira's gonna make a lot of noise so i'm gonna let her crack the egg and then i want to tell you guys a really cool fact we do have to beat the eggs before you put them in the cake. I'll let her crack all four, and then I'll tell you guys this, uh, this cool fact that I found about 1974. So the eggs are beaten, finally. Carrie got a little shell in there. She had to retrieve it. It's all good. Okay, Kristen, so you had the most exciting fact. I do. Of 1974 of all times, I think I you do. said. I do. It's really great. So one of my all-time favorite books, and I think it may have been your one of your favorite books, came out in 1974. All Creatures Great and Small. I do love that book, but no. Oh. It is Shel Silverstein's where the sidewalk ends oh i love that book me too what great poems in that book it's really a part of my childhood yes there's a uh, poem that i love it's about a girl yeah <gasps> played it i have the measles and the mumps a gash of rash and purple bumps that's right yes, i cannot go to school today said little peggy ann mckay i, I have, have the measles, measles and, and the mumps a gash of rash and purple bumps yes. well that's a great one and then the very last part of the poem is what What's that you say? You say today is Saturday? Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm, I'm going, going out, out to play. play. <laughs> oh, I thought that was, oh, she was such a rebel. Oh, I loved it. And that was me in school. I did not ever want to go to school. No. I faked sick all, all the, the time. time. Yes. That's right. But there was another poem that I thought would be totally appropriate for uh, today's podcast, for, for our life, really, and probably how I felt about you at some times uh, during our childhood. Oh, no. Yes. It is called for sale. <laughs> I shall read it to you all uh, very quickly, but it is delightful. One sister for sale, one sister for sale, one crying and spying young sister for sale. I'm really not kidding. Who'll start the bidding? Do I hear a dollar, a nickel, a penny? Oh, isn't there, isn't there, isn't there any one kid who will buy this old sister for sale, this crying and spying young sister for sale? 
That is not the first time she has read that to me. <laughs> I'll have you know. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about Shel Silverstein is his drawings were somewhat whimsical and scary all at the same time. Oh, Totally agree. Yes. Yes. Like the people were kind of distorted, creepy. Yeah. Like the brother who is shouting out for his sister to be for sale. Look at his face. His mouth is gigantic, like a demon or like a nightmare. And his belt is hanging low and his gut is hanging out. He He's, has very poor posture. He does, which is kind of like me. I'll try to stand taller, but they're kind of scary. They are kind of creepy. Yeah. Oh, I loved where the sidewalk ends. Now, yes. I got a light in the attic. That's right, because they came out a little later yes. when you were It's it. not, in my opinion, as good as no. when the side... They're good, yeah, that's but right. it's not the same. Yeah. I got um, my daughter one when she was little, too, mm -hmm. because she went through this phase like, oh, poetry stinks. Right. And I'm like, oh, no, it does not. You don't know from poetry. That's right. You need you some Shel Silverstein. That's right. Yeah, because he's the yeah. best. That's, That's so great. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, there was another book that came out in 1974. What? Carrie. Oh. <gasps> I have that down on my notes, too. That's right. That was Stephen King's debut novel. It was. It yeah. Was. And it was a good one. It was a good one. It was the, a scary one. The name was not correct. All Carries are wonderful. But it was spelled correctly. It was. Yeah. 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 To this day, I'll say, you know, my name. They'll say, oh, how do you spell that? And I'm like, you know, like Carrie, the crazy blood lady. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. Oh, C-A-R-R-I-E. I got it. Everybody's I got, it. got that. That's Everybody. cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get this over to the mixer. We're going to mix it up and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we have it all mixed. Yeah. I have taken a picture because the green pudding mixed with the yellow cake <laughs> has created this, I don't know, Kristen, what words do you have to describe it? Well, I was going to say that it looked like Homer Simpson's vial of toxic waste that he accidentally loses on his way home from work. Yeah, it yeah. kind of does. I think it looks like Ghostbusters green, oh, yeah. like Slimer green. Oh, yeah. We'll post the picture <laughs> and there's crazy. like one lone pistachio in the picture. It looks like something just fell in the batter. It does. There's not a bug in the batter, we swear. It's a nut. It's one <laughs> little pistachio One piece. little nut. Speaking of nuts. No, shut up. I was going to speak of nuts. Stop telling me to shut up, you crying and spying young sister for sale. Oh, it's just her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you take over the conversation. I'm used to that. <laughs> Wow, will the pain <laughs> never end? That's why we do this. I hurt you very badly. <laughs> and you take it because we're sisters. <laughs> That's right. That's the way a healthy sister relationship works. That's right. Now move along, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> we have a decision to make here. We do. Yes. This is a really important decision. Will this cake be successful? Will it not be successful? Uh, I feel right. like this next decision is totally everything hinges on it it does yep mm -hmm. so tell them the okay. decision here so we're gonna add like a nutty cinnamony yes. topping right so it goes on the top of the cake which is the bottom of the pan yep and then we're gonna put in half the batter and put more of that topping in the middle of the cake which then in fact is not a topping it's that's a right filling. it's a filling okay whatever <laughs> um okay so Kristen, yeah has what i would say is the most delicious baking nut yeah uh the pecan i do love a good pecan i mean i'll eat the heck out of some pecans yeah. too particularly if you add some cinnamon onto them oh yeah mm, delicioso so we have Kristen's chopped pecans yes but when i was looking stuff up about pistachios that's right i learned that in the pudding and stuff some of it is pistachio but a large quantity of it is also often almond right yeah and so i thought oh well going with the flavor then of this cake we should put almonds and she brought sliced almonds which would look pretty on the top when we turn it out they would you know yeah but the other thing is i think pecans would be better for the filling right okay so we had an original plan yeah. which was to rock paper scissors for which nut that we use yeah why do we have to use the same nut? Why can't we make <gasps> two mixtures? 
one mixture of almonds for the top yeah. and one mixture of pecan for the filling. Okay, so you know what? Even though we are going to do this, which I think is a fun idea, so we're going to have almonds on the top. That'll look really pretty. And then we'll have the pecans in the middle. That'll be beautiful. But I still think it would be fun to do rock, paper, scissors. I know. Let's do rock, paper, scissors for who has to do the dishes after this meal. Oh, I'm in. Okay, you ready? Yeah. And just in case you're wondering why I said I'm in with such enthusiasm. Yeah. Because there's one person in this household that from the age of, oh, I don't know, let's go six, <laughs> has done the vast majority of the dishes. And I'll tell you what her name is not. It's not Carrie. It's Kristen. Dishes girl Kristen. <laughs> She lies. Okay, so we have, not only in my family, my my husband's family, my stepmom's family, we all have an after-dinner technique that we like to call... I'm editing this out. ...pulling a Kristen. Okay, so what you do is after you eat, you immediately exit the room. For some emergency. I will say it frequently involves a restroom, but it doesn't have to. It could be anything. Oh, the baby's crying. No one hears the baby crying. Just Kristen. Um, It could be anything. Oh, I think I hear someone outside. Let me go check. It it could be anything. And then you magically appear after the dishes are all done. It's it's a it's a gift. It really is a it gift. Is, as yep. a kid, I had read somewhere <laughs> that if you rinse dishes with cold water, yes. the water sticks to the dishes yeah. and makes them harder to dry. Oh. And so I would be out in the kitchen doing the dishes alone, <laughs> stewing in my own anger. <laughs> And I'd wash that sucker and I would turn that water as cold as humanly possible and rinse it off. So when you finally decided yes, yes. to leave wherever you had gone to hide, yes. the dishes wouldn't be dry and you'd have to really work hard to dry them. Oh, Carrie, I can't help my digestive system <laughs> needing to use the restroom directly after dinner. That would never be my fault. For hours. <laughs> All right, so rock, paper, scissors for okay. the dishes. Oh, yeah, let's do this. All right, you ready? Yes, I am ready. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. We both oh, we scissors. Both scissors. <laughs> One more time. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh. I did rock. I won. Yeah. Back she, to our childhood. Yeah, she, she won nothing. <laughs> it's just another night in my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So have you split the cinnamon equally? Yeah. We got the cinnamon. One and a half teaspoons in one bowl. One and a half teaspoons in the other. Okay. And then we need a quarter cup oh of gosh. sugar. Isn't Can that you tiny? That? that is super <laughs> tiny. And as far as I know, there's four tablespoons in a quarter cup. I didn't know that off the top yes. of my head like that. Oh, I smarty, hope I'm right. But girl. I'm pretty sure I'm smarty smart. So okay. we'll do two tablespoons of sugar in each. Oh, thank you very much. You are most welcome. And what else? And then the nuts. The nuts. Well, Carrie, I think this was a great compromise. You know what, Kristen? What? We are fabulous compromisers. As soon as you're done being mean to me, we get stuff done. <laughs> hey, Carrie, um, I think I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's not time to do the dishes <laughs> oh, yet. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, As we're talking about, you know, this beautiful cake and Mary thinks it's a great idea on your waistline because there's no no frosting and stuff. I really love that. I know, right? Well, you know, it really makes sense. It really was a diet culture in 1974. Yes, very much so. Yeah, in the 70s in general. Yes. And so speaking of diet culture, do you happen to know what surgical procedure was invented in 1974 in Italy? I'm going to assume like the gastric bypass. Close. Liposuction. Oh. So I'm just going to say, eat the frosting, people, and get the lipo. <laughs> get the lipo. That's <laughs> perfect health tips from Kristen. Oh, yeah. Thank I'm you. full of them. Please send your complaints to Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> At momswoodenspoon.com. There you go. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to sprinkle, I think. Let's double check the recipe here. To sprinkle in the sliced almonds in the bottom of the pan. Let's see. So it says, put the topping in the bottom of the pan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we'll put half of the batter on top of it. The batter is kind of fluffy looking. It's really pretty. Oh, but it smells heavenly. It smells fantastic. Oh, I think I'm going to love this cake. I initially was not very excited about this. No, it's kind of plain. It did seem very bootleggy, but yeah, this helps. It does. 
And you know what? I think this cinnamon sugar topping is going to make us not really want a glaze. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because normally I like a good glaze on a bunt cake. Well, and then you think we've got a little bit of grease in the pan, so that's yeah. going to mix into the topping a little bit as that melts in the oven. It'll be interesting to see if it turns out like a streusel or if it turns out... Yeah, I was thinking like a syrup almost. Oh, yeah. That'll be interesting. I've it tried to, to do it kind of equally here. So let's pour the rest of that in. So pistachios in many countries yeah. are seen as symbols of health and happiness and good luck. Oh, nice. So actually, if you're, you know, I mean, today we're celebrating pistachios so it's really just a day of happiness and health yeah and good luck I love so that I think that that is super neat and also hearing the cracking of the pistachio nut is yes. viewed as a good omen oh in some places it's a happy relationship nice so couples will go and sit under a pistachio tree hoping to hear a nut crack oh. as a good omen for their relationship oh that's cute and as I was reading this, I was like, what do they mean, hear a nut crack? And then it yeah. dawned on me, pistachio shells pop open. That's so neat. Naturally, it must make a sound. As you're sitting there, you can hear it. Yes, I thought that was the <laughs> coolest really darn fun. thing. And you know what? Since we are celebrating and you and I both definitely want good luck for this year, how about if I just crack my knuckles? Oh, would that would that be good? Or I think that would be just fantastic. Okay. Make sure to do it right into the microphone, because boy, do people love. Oh the yeah, sound let me let me see what I can do. Cracking Let's knuckles. See. So I've I have half of it in the bunt pan. I'm gonna crack my knuckles. Yeah, I got nothing. Oh, that was my back. <laughs> She's standing here. We're all quiet. She's doing weird, wacky things with her fingers. I'm taking a picture. And all of a sudden, we all hear this pop. <laughs> it's my back. I'm old. We know. We know. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Why don't you spoon on the pecans? Because okay. I took your nuts and you take my nuts. Oh, and wow. I'm going to tell you a song that came out in 74. Now, we've done a couple episodes before that took place in 74. So I'm sure I've already made you guys a Spotify playlist. But I don't know that I included this one because it is Karip Ola. It is a song by Ringo Starr oh. that was very popular in 1974. And in 1974, Ringo Starr was 34. Okay. And he sang a song called You're 16. And it goes, you're 16, you're beautiful, and you're mine. Ew. <laughs> Well, maybe he was thinking back to his 16-year-old days. Okay, we're going to go with that, because otherwise, uh, creepers. Yeah, no I doubt. mean, that's like the song, Young girl, get out of my mind. My love for you is way out of line. Well, I mean, at least <laughs> the dude knew it. That's true. I saw him in concert with the monkeys in the 80s. Oh, I love it. Yes. A little David Jones. Hey, David Jones was there, and so was this guy. His name was... Gary Puckett in the Union Gap. I also saw Herman's Hermits. Oh, I mean, Kristen, you are just one lucky girl. Cool lady. Yeah, you I are. I'm Henry the A for yeah, Henry the A for yeah, my yeah. That was Herman's Hermits. Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> yes. I was like, why are you singing that? You are very weird. Now, before we put this cake in the oven, I want to talk to you real quickly about two different dolls that were super popular in 1974 and that I know we had. Well, before we put this cake in the oven... Yeah. I would like to put the second half of the batter on the top. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at it going, that is the most shallow cake I've ever seen in my life. How is that ever going to fill out the bunt pan? Oh, I got too excited about these dolls. Mm -hmm. Well, Carrie, I know you know one of them because we had a neighbor who made a little face of one of these dolls for us out of that salt dough. And I'm not sure if we told you guys this story on the podcast before, but it was hanging on the wall of, I think it was Carrie's bedroom. And I don't know how on earth we figured it out that it was salty, mm -hmm. but we would take this little doll face that was made out of the salt dough down off the wall and lick the back of it. Yes, we would. And then <laughs> various kinds of do-it-yourself, you know, clays and salt doughs must have been yeah. very popular at the time because we had some other things 
hanging on walls in the house. Oh, yes. And there was one in particular, I remember it was a little owl, Kristen, that I think you made for I mom. did. I still have it. Well, I tried licking the back of that. <laughs> oh, no. That sucker's been shellacked. Oh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it does not taste salty you and yummy. the heck, back of it. Heck, yeah. Oh, my gosh. If this one tasted delicious, why wouldn't they all taste delicious? Oh, that's hilarious. I made that owl in our garage when I was a little girl. I used an owl cookie cutter cut the salt dough and then painted it and shellacked the whole blooming thing yes, i did. will put a picture of that on the website i have it in our christmas decorations that's hilarious yeah i licked it it was not yummy oh my gosh so tell them the one that was yummy oh no, it was raggedy ann it was raggedy ann and andy were so popular they in were. 1974 i had a raggedy ann doll you did we had andy as well oh we i don't both. i clearly was not impressed by Andy. i mean come on it's a boy doll yeah, unless it's my boys. buddy who cares right you know exactly yes and there was another one that I bet you do not remember, but when I tell you what it is, you're going to go, oh, yeah. All right. You certainly won't get it from the name of this doll. The name of the doll was called a Dippity Flip. Oh. Was it a crying baby doll that when you took the pacifier out of its mouth, it started immediately crying loudly? And no. so your dad, within five minutes of you receiving such gift, took the batteries out, never to put them in again? No, but what a clever idea, Dad. It was a doll that if you flipped it right side out, it was Little Red Riding Hood. If you flipped it inside out, it was Grandma. And if you flipped Grandma's little hat inside out, there was the wolf on the other side. I remember that. Why do I also think that we had something like that and the doll faces were a wooden spoon? Now, Mom did make us wooden spoon dolls. They weren't dip it flipped we didn't flip them but she made little dresses for them but i want to say like they they had like a hat and hair they did and she put like the hair on so that you could flip the hair over the side of the face the, okay so the front of the spoon had a face yes the back of the spoon had a face and then she glued along the edge of the spoon yarn and so you could flip the hair over one face. Oh. And then flip Was one the... like an evil face? And then one was a, a happy face? I don't know. If you ask me, it was Little Red Riding Hood. And... Well, I don't remember flipping those. I do remember those wooden spoon dolls. And you would put the wooden spoon into like a vase and then fluff the dress out over it. And you would never see the vase. And it would stand up. Oh, I don't yeah. remember that at I all. I don't remember flipping it. But oh, the dippity flip doll was cool. Did our listeners have the dippity flip? I don't know. But but you know, they still make them because my daughter has one. We got it in, I want to say I, Williamsburg. I think our mom got it for her. Oh, yes. yes. And then, yeah, she loved that thing. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. Either. Right. If it was Little Red Riding Hood it or wasn't. not. But yeah. But oh, that's They're cool. Fun. Yeah. That's a nice way to have multiple dolls in one. It was. Now, it's pretty hard to have the wolf interact with grandma. Or Little Red Riding Hood. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Flip, 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 flip. I'm going to eat your Little Red Riding Hood. Flip, 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 flip. No, you're not. Flip, flip, flip. Stay away from my granddaughter. That'd be tricky, man. I, I clearly, <laughs> you've done it. I'm just saying. <laughs> I clearly have done it. Okay, now this bump pan looks properly filled. It does. And it we're going to put it in the oven. Yep. Okay. And I am going to share one more little tidbit about the beloved pistachio oh good lord are you guys not sick of talking about pistachios okay if carrie shares one more tidbit about pistachios now how about when we come back after taking this bad boy out of the oven how about if i talk about a little more 1974 trivia for you all what do you think i oh, hear yeah. them cheering i think i'm way more fun okay Okay, so... No, you're not. Wait a minute. I said okay. Yeah. I didn't mean that. No, you did. You did. Oh, okay. First thing said is what you mean. <laughs> so prior to 1974, I don't know if any of y'all remember this, but when you would get pistachios, they were very often red or green. They were dyed. I Do you remember. remember? Yeah. yeah. So apparently when they would get hand-picked... Something with the hand picking process would make the shells look stained. And so they started dyeing them to make them more visually appealing. I wondered why they did that. And then something happened in the world. Yeah. Um, around 1974, and it shifted the main place for growing pistachios to the U.S. and California. Yeah. And they had a new way to pick that didn't rely on people. And oh. so the shells didn't get stained. Oh. And so they stopped dyeing them. 
how interesting and how much healthier. I know Mary would have appreciated that. Oh, I think she would. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. You can still get red ones if you're jonesing for a little history. Can you really? Yeah. Probably like one of those Vermont country catalogs or something like that. (laughs) Probably. A good old (laughs) dose of red dye number one or whatever. (laughs) We don't know any of the numbers. We're just making up the numbers. We promise. You know what? I didn't think anybody would take me seriously. (laughs) I make up, quote, facts so often (laughs) that I... (laughs) Wait a minute. You don't have to tell our listeners that you make up facts. I'm pretty sure they know that what christy mcnichol she was in facts of life i think it is time for us to go okay cakes in the oven we'll be back in a minute guys bye Okay, everybody, the cake is out of the oven. Kristen and I have had some time apart from each other (laughs) so she can think about her bad behavior. I'm sorry. (laughs) She's not, even a little. Not one bit. Mm -mm. (laughs) The cake smells so cinnamony delicious that I am giddy to try this bad boy. It is beautiful. I cannot wait to cut in and see what color it is. You do not expect that it's going to look green on the inside no, at so, all. No, and maybe it won't. We shall see. But of course, we had to decorate it up just like the mom in my big fat Greek wedding when she comes out with the bunk, bunk cake. And she had a potted plant uh-huh. in the middle of the hole of the bunt cake. Yes, she did. And so my friend Beth swung by as we were recording. We had Beth on our podcast. Uh, which one did she taste? Oh, I cannot remember, but it was Thanksgiving. That's right. Of last year. Oh, mm-hmm. that's right. I think she tasted something yummy. It was the date nut cake, I believe. It, 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 yes. Yes. And so she swung by and dropped off some beautiful hydrangeas from her garden. And so, of course, we had to decorate our bunk cake with a hydrangea. Uh, yeah. Yeah, It we looks did. fantastic. But it now looks I'm wonderful. It I'm going to yeah, take so that take out. it out so we can slice into this sucker. Wow. The top of this is gorgeous with those sliced almonds. Oh, they browned up beautifully yeah so that was a great choice for the top now do you want a sliver uh or a well, big i mean piece? i feel like i want a giant piece but let's go with sliver because okay. if i'm going locale without the frosting maybe oh, a giant yeah. piece isn't the way to go all right oh i'm gonna cut into it and then we'll see all of a sudden what color it is Oh my gosh, it is bright green. It's a pretty color of green. It's more lemon lime. It is way less of a horrifying color coming out of the oven than it was going into the oven. Very much. It's really pretty. And you can see the line of the nuts and cinnamon. It's really neat looking. It I, is. I absolutely didn't expect this. No. Well, since this was your idea, you go ahead and get the first taste. And while Carrie is taking her first bite, I wanted to see if our listeners remember something that came out in 1974 on Captain Kangaroo. Simon in the Land of Chalk Drawings. Mike Myers on Saturday Night Live made a little twist on it where he was in the bathtub and he said, well, you know, my name is Simon and I like to make drawings. (laughs) I have heard you and your husband sing that for years. I have zero memory. Really? Oh, I've loved it so much. And I did finally find it online. I found the the little beginning of it. So if you guys watch Simon in the Land of Chalk Drawings, you'll have to check that out on our website. But back to the cake. What do you think, Care? Happy National Pistachio (laughs) Day to you. You absolutely need to make this. It was so ridiculously easy. And it is delicious it's so delicious that Kristen has started throwing it on the floor my bite fell on the floor in her greedy attempt to go for bite number two in her single taste testing (laughs) she chunked some onto the floor and I I gotta tell you I think I would stick with the dual nuts the pecans in the center with that cinnamon are outstanding but the flat sliced almond slivers on the top are excellent and the Mm -hmm. flavors of the nuts do not compete with each other it just makes the whole cake taste a little bit nuttier it does it's really good what do you think Kristen I like it it's not super sweet Mm -mm. it's moist the beauty of a bunt cake is you get in every piece of cake you're going to get that nice crispy brownness 
and the moistness of the inside of the cake. And so this is delicious. You know, in 1974, they actually had boxed mixes for Bundt cakes that you could pick up at the grocery store. And the majority of them had a tunnel of filling in the middle, not just a little ribbon like our nuts, but you could buy one that had almost like a vanilla frosting that formed in the middle. I want to say that I remember ads for that Mm -hmm. because I wanted one so I know. Bad. Our mom we, never made one. No, she did not. And I think it would probably be about as easy as this. You just make the batter, you put it in, and then you put the filling kind of in the center of that first layer of batter. Yes, but we don't have that. No. We have this. And it is tasty. Oh, you should make it. I think it would be a great coffee cake. Yeah. I feel like we have hit on yet another winner. I think we have. I think if you were not planning on celebrating National Pistachio Day, you absolutely should. I think you should. And I think your family would be incredibly pleased. Forget your family. You would be incredibly pleased. Absolutely. To have some of this. And nobody would know that you did not spend a long time on this bad boy. And that it started with a lemon or yellow, no lemon, a <laughs> yellow cake mix. I know, and what a delight to cut into it at a party and people are like, ooh. You could make it on like St. Patrick's Day as That's well. That's a great idea. Anything calling for green, I think this is a good one. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think we made a winner. Yes. Yahoo. Well, that is it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Do not forget to check out our blog on our website. And most importantly, don't miss our next episode on March 11th, where we will make one of our listeners' favorite family recipe. See you soon. Thanks for listening to Mom's Wooden Spoon. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe. If you want a copy of this recipe or to check out our blog, click on the link to our website in the podcast description. If you'd rather, you could get to our website through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pick your poison. Don't say poison. We're making food. Stupid rock, papers, and scissors. I know she totally rigged it. She just wanted to pull a Kristen. Jeez. Hey, Carrie, thank you so much for doing the dishes. I'm sorry you lost. Oh, it's no problem. Fifty years. You'd think I'd learn.